All right, hello and um, welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Luke Charlton, who is in the future over there in Australia, <laughs> yeah. up near Byron Bay. And I, just, right. I have promised I will stop every asking every Australian for the lotto numbers every time I come on. You know, the so. lotto. <laughs> <laughs> I use um, the English joke every now and then too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Luke is known as the, Luke. Yeah, Luke's known as the Aussie Hermit, uh, Master of Marketing, Student of Persuasion, and <laughs> Drinker of Muscles, <laughs> yeah. which, is fan, which is a fantastic combination, I think. And what we're going to talk about today is getting more leads who doesn't want to get more leads uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today and uh, luke let's get straight into it i mean you have you have run an incredible amount of leads you've done an incredible amount yep. of, of of research and studying um so let's get straight into it what when you first started out on this journey how did you mm. think you were going to be able to generate leads and how were you actually uh, able to generate them? Yeah, so that's a funny story. So I, I took the spaghetti, spaghetti at the wall approach. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. I, I moved from Australia to London back in 2013. I'm, I'm back in Australia now. But my my kind of theory of that is like, well, I, I'm from Canberra. I'm living in Canberra. There's 400,000 people here. The London has, you know, um, was it a, few, a couple million people, more people in London. Plus, I, I'm a um, part pom as well uh got my uk passport so i thought london would be a good place to kind of just branch out from where i was but anyway more people in london so that means obviously there's more it's easier to get uh, easy to get leads easy to get clients so i went over there and i just took the spaghetti at the wall approach i just like tried you know you know one guru said you've got to be doing networking events so i went to networking five nights per week one guru said you've got to be doing press releases so i literally was putting out press releases like got me like zero traffic uh, one girl said, you've got to be doing webinars and then you've got to be on LinkedIn and you've got to do Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups and, you know, on, on it went. So I tried to do all these different strategies, throwing spaghetti at the wall. And um, in that whole time, I got one client in in 12 months. Uh, and um, so that, that didn't actually even come from my marketing. Funnily enough, it came from <laughs> a speaker program that I invested in. And I met this other coach there and helped him with his copy. So, yeah, it was a it was a it was a huge failure. Um and wait, what was the what was the question again? Sorry about um, yeah. No, I was just asking you like a bit how you know. So you started off with your spaghetti against the wall approach. Um, and how, how did, did you I end up? up yeah, how did you end up generating yeah. the leads? But just an interesting thing because I think the experience that you just outlined there is the experience that a lot of entrepreneurs, small businesses, marketing people say are, are still yeah. having today. It's like they're still throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying to be on every platform and everywhere and hoping for the best. Yeah. Yeah, what really changed um, for me <laughs> was when I understood like the the I guess the art and science, like what lead generation is, and it's um, you know because so what I was doing in London is I was chasing prospects down. That's what I was doing. I was literally yeah. literally chasing them down, like foot on pavement, going to networking events up to five nights per week. It was crazy. I was working like probably fourteen hours a day and not getting any traction. I was meeting a lot of people, but yeah, nothing. <laughs> um, and what I what really changed for me is that you don't have to chase people you can get them chasing you down and a, and a, a really simple way to do that is with a with a piece of bait um you know people call it like a lead magnet client carrot um it's just a piece of content right so you can actually mm -hmm. attract your dream client with not a thousand pieces of content not 10 not two just like one bit of um you know one good piece of content which people call a lead magnet um so for example my lead magnet is called uh, nine email offers that get coaching clients for free okay so i'm targeting coaches in that with that mm -hmm. specific lead magnet so the point is it's it's a free guide that shows them nine offers to get them what they want most which is more clients and um uh and it's targeted specifically for coaches so in the name of the lead magnet, it's literally says you know coaching clients mm -hmm. so a lead magnet not only generates you leads but it generates you the right leads and this is where a lot of service professionals and other businesses they can get people opting into their list sometimes especially like when they're running paid ads they can get opt-ins but mm -hmm. they think that's the end goal it's not you want to get the right people opting in so that's kind of like where the art what's where the, the the art part of the art and science of lead generation comes in so the 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 science is just give them something for free the art part is okay how do you give them the right thing to get them to opt into your email list we can go into about that as well yeah if you want. 
Yeah, but what what I like about that though, uh, what I like about that is um, the fact is that you've gone from broad scattergun, if you like, down to very very targeted. And let me ask you: when you first started to make that transition, was it was it an immediate? Was it an, did you get immediate success, or did it take a while? Did you ever question the fact that you were now kind of you know shrinking down to 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 one, uh, that's a, one main well, that's a channel good question yeah i got i got success in terms of generating leads absolutely because like mm. you know people love free so it's very easy mm. to create something for free and give it away like you will get as i said you'll get opt-ins it's whether it's the right opt-in so my first lead magnet was actually called um 27 profitable coaching niches and the problem with like it was good because it got me coaches on my list who was who, who i wanted to target the problem with that lead magnet, it got me a lot of like brand new coaches, like fresh out of um, right. you know, certification school. And I didn't, I didn't want to work with, uh, you know, brand new coaches who don't have any idea about their market or their offer or anything like that. I want to kind of coaches that are a bit more established. So I was generating leads, but when I started emailing them, the emails weren't, weren't really converting. So, um, so it took a bit of a process to, to understand that. And then I changed my, um, changed my lead magnet to, um, more around, um, uh, yeah, helping them get clients and that brought in better quality leads. That was a, an old, I ran it for like five years. So they could, this can last a long bit of time. These pieces of content, it was like mm -hmm. five, um, uh, five email templates. It was called the rapid rush of clients, email templates. And, um, and now my latest one is the nine email office, which again, that's actually, it's targeting coaches, but I'm still in, I'm not really in a niche. Like, and I understand that I, I'm in a bit of a broader market with a lot more mm -hmm. competition. I understand that because I know I, I I'm specifically doing that because I know how to stand out in a crowded marketplace. Um, but when I'm working with clients, what we try to do is get niche down uh, a little bit further because mm -hmm. the the more that you niche down and then create a lead magnet for that niche, the, the your your campaigns become way more responsive, way more responsive. So yeah, uh, yeah. What about the yeah no absolutely. What about the uh, the content of the emails then that you that you would send out? I mean, what what's your strategy around that? Because if you have the piece yeah. of you have the lead magnet, the piece of content, but if you can't get the emails opened and read, they're probably never. Yeah, so that's a big that. part about what I teach is so part one is building your list, and part two is emailing your list. And <laughs> this is probably like a, more of a one hour discussion, but sure. um, is what I'm about to say is probably going to scare a lot of people. Uh, what I teach is to send an email every single day. Um, and the reason why is when you send the style that I teach, the more you email, the more you make. Okay. Now I don't teach what most people do is like you send them like how to content or you just pitch, pitch, pitch. Um, what I found is I, when I started emailing, I was, I was seeing a lot of great content is what most people do. They send a lot of great comments, but a lot of time on the emails and they get, it maybe even get replies, but but the engagement goes down, right? You're like, what's happening? I'm sending great content. People aren't, mm -hmm. you know, open rates are good at the beginning and then they drop like that, right? After yeah. a couple of weeks, people just kind of put your emails in the read it later file. Um, so I was getting lots of like replies, uh, lots of, hey, love the content, but I wasn't getting any sales. And then also the engagement was like going. Whoosh. Um, and what was, what was frustrating is, you know, this is back in 2015, 14, 15 um i'm looking at like what people are spending their time on right they're spending hours on on youtube on social media on their phones mm -hmm. watching hours to, now it's like streaming right it's netflix it's hulu it's all this so and that's still today so you know my prospects are spending all this time and it's the same for everyone our prospects are spending all of this time on these um, on these um platforms um that don't actually help their lives but they can't yep. spend five minutes to write the to read my email that helps their life. So what, what was I missing? So what I realized is, well, I shouldn't fight it. I should just do what these platforms are doing. And that is simply to make my emails more entertaining. So a really simple way to demonstrate this is just to go to my blog or jump on my email list and you'll see my emails. You'll see how I do it. I lead with entertainment in the first instance, you must lead with entertainment. People need to be entertained. Um, and then, then you have a lesson from there. So the, the framework that I teach is story lesson close. I choose stories because we all teach in stories. That's our natural way to entertain. You don't have to be a comedian. You don't have mm -hmm. to be a late, late, late show host, right? You don't have to be naturally funny or anything like that. You don't even have to be, you know, a, a great storyteller. We, we actually all tell stories every day to our friends, our family, our colleagues, our, you know, our kids. Um, so you just tell a story like you would to, to any of those people and you just 
put in so in your email so story lesson close again if you just if you read my emails you'll get a good understanding you'll see my formula in there it's very straightforward but by leading with um, entertainment i found that more people are engaging um, they actually look forward to my emails even though i send them every day and most mm -hmm. importantly they buy from them as well yeah you know it's it's really interesting there is i love the i love the part about storytelling because uh as you say, this is how, how people engage. And we all come, generally speaking, like I'm Irish. I mean, I come from a very, you know, uh, a storytelling culture, which is how, yeah. you know, information and stuff was passed down through the year. You're in Australia, like the Aboriginals and so whatever, yeah. like great storytelling yeah. cultures. So to your point is, there's something innate in us that reacts to stories. Yeah, it's how we understand. Yeah, reacts. So they're, they're emotional um, and... Yeah, your prospect can more easily understand your message as well when it's told in a story because that's how we're used to consuming information. So there's a lot of benefits to telling a story. Not only is it easier to communicate that way, but it it's beneficial to your prospect and understanding your message as well. Mm -hmm. So let me talk about. I mean, so you 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 entertain at the beginning. Now here's here's something that I often find is there's a lot of people who try to be funny, entertaining, engaging. Mm but they're just not very good at it or it's ham fisted or it's lifted or whatever it does. And, yeah. and, and we know like, we know like humor can be quite subjective and stuff. So how do you, how did you find a way to come up with something that was entertaining, hit the spot? Um, as in a story? Exactly. No, just okay. as in like your, your opening for emails. Like, cause I said, like often I get ones and I'm just like, it's a bit lame. I have to say. Like, uh, sorry, the actual opening of the, the email. Like, yeah, the, no, it? the, yeah, the entertain, the so-called entertainment bit at the beginning. Some people yeah, try that and, story, it, just, yeah, and it just come, comes off a little bit lame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's, that's a good question. So um, what I teach in terms of getting stories, you, there's a lot of different places you can pull the stories. Okay. So you can be, there can be personal stories. They can be client stories. They're always great, like client uh, case study type stories. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of my stories from just, you know, I'm a, I'm a hermit, right? So I don't have this like amazing mm -hmm. lifestyle. So, so I just get my, a lot of my stories from content I'm already consuming. So I watch a lot of YouTube videos on, on investing. Um, and I have other interests as well. So, and I, you know, and mainstream media news sites are really great for that. Like there was this like, uh, lady the other day, the headline was a woman sent to hospital because, you know, she was too afraid to fight in front of her boyfriend. That was the headline. And I laughed. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, I'm going to, Turn this into an email. I didn't know how, so I just told the story. Hey, I just read this on this news website, and then I tied it into uh, a lesson. So, um, the, you know, in terms of like, how do you know whether that's entertaining the story? Um, the way that I decide is, does it spark an emotion within me? Right. So, do I find it funny? Do I find it, um, you know, frustrating? Do I? Am I? Whatever the strong emotion is, sad, happy, frustrated, angry. If I, if if, if it. Um, it triggers a strong emotion within me, it's going to trigger a strong emotion within the pr a prospect that resonates with you, right? Because people buy, if you're a service professional, people buy you just as mm -hmm. much as they buy your service. Um, so you, what, what I love about this method is you, you find that you start attracting clients, like really great clients that resonate with you because they read, you know, they get, they know your personality from your emails, but the, a great way to do that is just pick stories that um, spark an emotion within you. So does that answer your question? No, that totally answers my question because what I often see is, uh, you know, an email will arrive in, it might have a clever subject line. It may have a clever, funny-ish opening line, but it's disconnected from the rest of the email. Then the rest of the email yeah. is straight into a pitch. It's straight into a pitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll see some guru tricks like that where, <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll say, yeah, they'll, they'll, trick you with a certain subject line and then it'll be something totally different. And yeah, I definitely don't teach that. You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so um, tell me a little bit about some of the, maybe some of the pe uh, people that you've worked with, you don't have to name names, but um, tell me about a couple of success stories you've had with. with yeah. I've heard a really people. great one actually <clears throat> that I think is relevant to this whole lead gen and email conversation. Mm -hmm. So I had a client that hired me to run her Facebook ads. Um, it's a few months ago now. And she had a lead magnet called, so just some context, she sells a uh, pretty much done for you e-commerce store, but she provides one-on-one -on -one coaching so they know how to run their actual mm -hmm. store, but she'll set up most of them for them. Then she'll, for yeah, she'll set up most of it for them. Then she'll coach them on how to kind of um, take over the ads and uh, keep it running kind of thing. Um, so she had this lead magnet called seven, seven profitable e-commerce niches. 
And um, it was getting like the cost per lead was okay. But she said like, the reason why she hired me is like, you know, my sales aren't that great. Um, I need to improve the sales. And so basically they opt in for this seven niches lead magnet and they go down a 45 day order responder. So I said to her, look, why don't we, you know, so it sounds like you need better quality leads. <clears throat> so why don't we change the lead magnet from um, seven profitable e-commerce niches? Because that is targeting someone that's probably more in research mode. They're trying to figure mm -hmm. out what niche or what type of product they want to sell. Yeah. Let's go, let's go after someone that has already decided that they want to run an e-commerce store. They're maybe just deciding between you and a different company. So we created a lead magnet. I said, <clears throat> actually on her website, she's got um, these nine websites that are already ready to go. So you can click into it and you can, the e-commerce store is there and you can buy it. And, um, and I said, Let, let's just take those nine those nine stores that you already have ready to go, we'll put it in a free guide and we'll just call it nine done for you e-commerce stores for sale. Mm -hmm. And we'll give that away as a lead magnet. And um, that basically transforms her business. So we, we scaled now from 15K a month to 50K a month in ad spend. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, you know, her sales have gone up uh, quite a lot since, uh, since during those better quality leads. So we've been able to scale because of those high quality leads um, that are now converting more. <clears throat> so the, the point is though, through consistent email um, and through um, thinking about the market and creating a, a lead magnet that is targeted at that dream client. In this case, it was people that are you know, kind of, that have already decided they want an e-commerce store. They already decided they want to buy a business. Um, so a high quality prospect, well, uh, we, were, we were able to transform the, the campaigns. Yeah, no, what I love about that is the fact that, uh, you know, you you reoriented it for the, the higher quality lead, the, the prospect that was better rather than where it was, where you probably, as you said, you're probably getting a lot of people who are starting out, maybe, maybe not the idea client for you, um, yeah. but this change in orientation. And I feel that I feel that that's uh, something that a lot of people can learn from, because I think oftentimes, they maybe keep the keep their target too broad. Um, again, uh, you know, yeah. I mean that whole thing where people go, "Well, who's your customer?" Well, everybody, and you go, "No, it's yeah, I, yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah." I'm actually redoing the first module of my program, um, and uh, it's all about yeah, picking your market and getting clear on that. And and I was, um, so I'm going through all at the moment. But I, I got an application from a guy yesterday and um, to work with me. And he's he's similar. He's like, you know, I work with small business owners. To help them scale basically is what it okay so like what small business owners is just it's so broad mm -hmm. if you run a lead magnet to just quote unquote small business owners you will you get people opting in but they will be from all over the place um most of them won't have the money to invest because most of them we knew um so it's just um it's much you get you get much better roi from getting clear on okay when i say small business owners what what type of industry do i ideally you know do i get best results mm -hmm. in um you know how, what's what size of business because small business is so so broad is it one to five million is it five to ten is it um you know ten to fifty whatever it is so get very very clear how many staff do they have because once you get that clarity then you start to understand more okay the, the actual problems that they're dealing with because each industry this is for business coaches obviously each each industry is different for, for a business. Like some have deal with government regulations, some deal with yep. different tax codes, some deal with um, different laws relating to like franchises, you know, franchise laws and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. by just saying small business owners, I've, I've put in e-commerce stores, franchise businesses, you know, oil rigs, um, you know, that's just like, so by doing that, you're actually making it way harder for yourself, uh, making it easy for the competition who do kind of narrow down. Because if I'm in, like, let's say I'm an oil rig who's suffering from, you know, a high turnover or high mm -hmm. death because of the thing. If I've got a coach that says, hey, are you an oil rig that is suffering from, like, you know, you have a lot of deaths, you know, you want you want less to kind of, you want more better safety. I help with that versus a coach saying, are you a small business owner? Uh, do you need help, you know, with your business kind of thing? Uh, I'm going to choose the one that specializes every single time. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I totally agree. And I think that's, uh, and I think that's becoming more and more um, obvious to people, the specialization. Um, just one quick thing before we finish. Um, where do you see, uh, where do you see advertising going? Is there anything coming down the pike? Or when you look at the future, do you, with these platforms, do you see anything new on the horizon or anything that we should be watching out for? Uh, not... <laughs> Depends how far down the conspiracy theory hole you want to go. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens 
I think there is going to be a shake up in the future. I, I think that some of these platforms are probably not doing the most legal things. Um, so whether that comes back to bite them or not, that will be interesting. But, you know, for example, Twitter, it's interesting what's happening there with, um, yeah. with Elon Musk and that deal and them not wanting to share their information on how many real people yeah. that they have. So, you know, if that gets, if it's true that they don't have as many people as what they say, you know, that could put their company under, you know, and then you've got Truth Social coming up and other platforms. So I, I, I there may be a sh shift in, in terms of like where you advertise, but at the end of the day, like I don't really concern myself with that. I'm more concerned with the things that, that don't, that um, are kind of eternal. And that yeah. is, I spend, I read, I don't look at all the Facebook updates and all that stuff, all the new tech and different placements and all this stuff. I literally pay zero attention to that. Where I spend my time is how do I get better knowledge? How do I get clearer and more knowledge about the market that I'm advertising to? And how do I create them a better offer, right? If I, if I know the market and I create a great offer, it doesn't matter. I could be on Facebook. I could be on YouTube. I could be on Truth Social. It could be on the next social platform that comes up. My campaigns are going to convert. So that's why that's where I spend my most of my time is getting better at uh, marketing and selling uh, and those foundational principles that don't ever change because human psychology doesn't change. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I mean, it's like that. I think that Bruce Lee quote or something, you know, I don't fear a man who has like, who knows a thousand kicks. I fear a man who's yeah, exactly one right. kick a thousand times or something like that. Exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, listen, this has been great, Luke. Uh, before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. Um, so I uh, run ads for people. I have a small handful of clients. Um, typically they're service professionals, like having them generate appointments in their calendar, qualified appointments in their calendar. Um, and I also help um, service professionals that um, maybe aren't at that level for me to run their ads. I kind of coach them on that as well. But if you need help with any of those, probably the best place to start is to just jump on my list. So just go grab that free guide. It's, um, just go to 9emailoffers.com. Nine, that's the number nine email office.com and that it's it's um as i said i advertise two coaches but that can work for any service professional so go opt in for that and you'll see my emails you'll see how it works you'll understand my personality and you'll go uh, do i want to work with this guy he's a bit weird <laughs> maybe he's pretty good he's pretty good at uh, getting, uh, getting results but we'll see anyway just jump on the list and see if you see if you like the strategy that i teach in there yeah, I love it. Listen, thanks very much, Luke. And I encourage people to go check it out. And so thank you for today. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon.